tuned in with us today here at Cherry Grove Baptist Church, the drive-in service. We are delighted that you're here. If you're visiting with us today, you're our guest. We love to see new faces. We like to make new friends, so you're especially welcome today. We would like to get a bit of information from you if we could. And you can just put your hand outside your window there and wave at us, and we'll get you a card and an ink pen. An ink pen is yours to keep. You'll jot down your information. We appreciate that. Any prayer needs, we'd like to pray for you as well. Do we have any guests with us today? Please raise your hand outside your window. Praise the great Lord. He's been so faithful to us here at Cherry Grove to be able to have services on the parking lot, continue to worship Him, and we just want to adore Him and glorify Him and lift His name on high today. Two things I'd like to mention to you as we're beginning this morning, those watching by Facebook as well, we are glad you're here. I just want to thank the church, Martha and I. Thank you so much for your cards and uh, your thank yous and your appreciation notes and the food and and the letters. What a, what a blessing last week was. You appreciated your pastor and family. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It is my joy to serve you. It's our joy to minister here in East Tennessee. And I pray and I thank with all my heart our best days are in front of us. So let's just get after this with all our heart. Amen. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Another thing I'd like to mention to you is next Sunday morning. When? Next Sunday morning, November the 15th, the drive-in service will be at 11 o'clock. So this is a change. Today we're meeting at 9.30. Next Sunday, November the 11th, I mean the 15th, we'll be here at 11 o'clock. So invite your friends. Get on the phone and be encouraging others to come on out and worship God in these drive-in services. On Wednesday night, we're in the building at, 11, at uh, 7 o'clock. So we'd love to have you then. Let's get this worship on this morning. Good morning. Grab your bulletins and let's lift our voices together and sing, I will call upon the Lord. This time we turn to giving to the Lord. I'll tell you what, God is a giver. You'll never outgive God. Praise Him. He provides for our family. He gives us food. He gives us clothing. He gives us shelter. He gives us things for our enjoyment. Hallelujah to our God. What a God. More than anything, He's given His Son, Jesus. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise you, Father, for your generosity. Praise you for your giving. We want to give back to you today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our jobs. Thank you for our income. Thank you, Lord, for how you blessed us to overflowing. And today, would you take these tithes? Would you take these offerings? Spread them out far and wide. We want to be good stewards, Lord, of all that you put in our hands. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Bless you. Matthew 5, 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. <laughs> tremendous job. Praise the great Lord for that. And that is two sisters. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful job. I know their parents are just thrilled to death. 
God is good all the time. Yes, he is. Take your Bibles this morning, church. I love the Word of God. I am so grateful that God has given us the truth. I don't have to worry about what is the truth. Where can I find the answers for life? Where can I find principles? Where can I find things that never change? I have the Bible, God's holy word, and I am grateful for the truth. This very morning, we're going to look at Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31. So if you'll find your copy of the precious word of God, we'll go ahead and be enjoying these passages this morning. The sermon title today is The Truth About Heaven and Hell. The message today is about salvation. The message today is about the truth of a place called heaven and a place called hell. You see, Jesus is so merciful. He's not hiding things from us. He's not covering things up. He wants everybody to know the way of salvation, the way to be forgiven, the way to be saved, because he wants you in heaven for all eternity with him. Verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared scrumptiously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel, angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Verse 26, And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to uh, you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come then from thence. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one rose from the dead. What a story, a true story. It's not called a parable because it's not a parable. It's a true story. Now I want you to think with me here. There's names given here for one of the individuals. The other one, God don't know him. I'm talking personally and having a relationship. So it just calls him a rich one, a rich man. But Lazarus, he knows intimately, personally, as his child, been bought by the blood of the Lamb, been saved, been forgiven, heaven bound. He is a righteous one through the blood of the Lamb. The rich man is not. We see here today two men, two lives, two deaths, two destinies, and two witnesses. So take your Bible and let's look at these together. The truth about heaven 
and hell. First of all, two men. In verse 19 of your Bibles, we're introduced to these two men. There is a certain rich man. The Bible tells us not this man's name because God did not know him intimately and personally. This is a sad story of this man's life. Scripture tells us that he was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared scrumptiously every day. In other words, this man had everything he needed. He had an abundance of things. He had all that money could buy. He had several of things. He was very self-indulgent. He was very self-centered. The Bible tells us about this other man as well, and his name is given. A certain beggar, verse 20 in your Bibles, named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now notice in your Bible, Lazarus laid at his gate, this certain rich man's gate, every day. So the rich man had an opportunity to wrench out and show compassion and mercy to Lazarus, but he did not. He was so focused on himself, so centered on himself. He was an unrighteous man. Two men. One full of pride. One full of humility. Knowing God in a personal relationship. Folks, pride will kill you. Pride will destroy you. It will keep you from believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and being saved. Think about it with me. Here's this certain rich man. His pride would not let him go from his own self-reliance in trusting in money. Turn to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. The Bible says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a holy spirit before a fall, before a stumbling. This is what's going to happen to this man. He's going to have destruction come up on him, this rich man. He's going to have a fall come up on him like he never dreamed. Then it will be too late to make any kind of decision about Jesus. Too late to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Listen to me today. Those by Facebook, those that are sitting in your cars this morning, you can wait too late. Today is the day of salvation. Right now is the time to make your decision. A little later in the story, in verse 22, we're going to see two deaths. In other words, it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that to judgment. It's too late after you die to make any kind of decision. It's done. It's over. Pride. Pride keeps us from admitting our sin, from trusting Jesus as Lord and Savior, from humbling ourselves. Scripture tells us about pride. It goes before destruction, Proverbs 16, 18, and a holy spirit before a fall. That's what was going on in this man's heart. That's what was going on in this man's life. Two men. A rich man here. Nothing wrong with being rich. It's what you do with it. Your attitude toward it. Here we see in this Bible, uh, this morning, in this story, that this man was so self-centered. This man felt like he could have life on his own terms apart from God. Maybe he thought he could have life through his money, through his resources. Folks, that's not life. Only Jesus gives life. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Listen to me this morning. With all my heart, I plead with you. I persuade you this morning. You need to be saved before it's everlasting too late. And if you are saved, you need to rejoice and blow your horn to the glory of God. <laughs> I pray you'd be able to blow your horn today. Anybody under the sound of my voice?
You need to meet God. You need to be saved. You need to enjoy His fellowship. You need to enjoy the glories of His name. You need to enjoy the fact that He's given you a secure future. He's given you a hope that cannot die. He's given you a home in heaven where you will be for all eternity. You need to rejoice, O church of the living God. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Hallelujah. The truth about heaven and hell. Two men. One a rich man. The other Lazarus a beggar. Now I want you to see something. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 18. Just a few more chapters over. Same book. It reminds me of this parable. Now the one we're turning to is a parable because Jesus tells us so. But the, the, the attitudes of the two men as they pray in this parable are very similar to the other story that we are looking at. Luke chapter 18, verse 9 through 14, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. So Jesus here is telling this parable because of their attitudes. The attitude of pride, the attitude of unbelief, the attitude of despising others and looking down on others. Scripture says in verse 10, Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood, this reminds me of the rich man in our main text story, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not like as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Then verse 13, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up his would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, this publican got it. He got it. He saw who he was, a sinner, lost, and needing help, needing help from God, needing forgiveness. I tell you, verse 14, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted listen to me the point is clear you'll humble yourself today God will save you humble yourself and admit your sin to God and God will save you but if you won't humble yourself like this certain rich man in our main text Luke 16, 19, if you won't humble yourself, if you won't let go of that pride, and if you won't admit your sin, you can't be saved. God won't save a proudful person. You've got to admit, listen to this. Jesus, you've got to admit that you're wrong, that you're trying to do life on your own. You're trying to do it your way. And it'll never work. You're lost. You're damned. You're on the road to a devil's hell for all eternity. Wake up. Hear the gospel. See the gospel. And believe in the Lord Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. He loves you. He loves you fervently, passionately. He wouldn't have came to this earth and died on an old rugged cross and put up with the evil and sinfulness of man and went through that suffering upon suffering if he didn't love you. He's pursuing you. He's drawing you, lost person, that you would repent. He's using your circumstances. He's using this pandemic. He's using your relationships. He's wooing you. He's drawing you, he wants to see you saved before it's everlasting too late. You need to be saved today. You're included in these two men. All of us are. The two men. The two men. Look at the two lives. 
it tells us there are two men, a rich man, and then a beggar. And then it goes further and tells us what kind of lives they have. We touched on one of them. The rich man had it, everything that he could imagine. But Lazarus, we see in verse 20, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. This man was crippled. This man couldn't even take care of his own sores. The dogs had to lick his sores. He was in terrible shape. He was in terrible shape physically, but he knew the Lord. Listen to me. Listen to me loud and clear. The most important thing is the things that are spiritual. We may live in this life and suffer and have really hard times and difficulties, but the most important thing is where you're going to live for all eternity. Spiritual things. Spiritual things are the most valuable things, the most holy things. Turn your Bible to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. God warns about this way of thinking in this rich man's mind, and he warns us in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets, right now in this parking lot right now over Facebook, right now through these electronics and media. Wisdom. God is crying out for you to be saved. God is crying out for his people to value their salvation and reach the lost like never before. She crieth in the chief places of the concourse, in the openings of the gates. Look at your Bible, verse 20, Proverbs 1, in the city. She uttereth her word, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have set at naught all my counsel, and would none cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. I told you, you can't wait too late. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For, they, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of their fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearketh unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from evil, for fear of evil. A comparison. Those that accept God and are saved. Those that are rejecting God and that are lost. The truth of heaven and hell. I'm so glad that God tells us the truth every day. I'm so glad that God don't leave us in the dark. I'm so glad that God puts it out there simple and plain and shares his wisdom continuously. You can be saved before it's everlasting too late. Two men, we see the story. Two lives, we see their lives, how they had it on earth and lived. Now let's look at two deaths, but help me, listen to me. When you die, it's too late. 
You can't make decisions. But God shows this story to us to help us the real help us to understand the reality, the truth of heaven and hell. The price is too high. The consequence is too devastating not to accept God and be saved. Verse 22. To death. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now I want you to notice here. When the beggar, when God's child died, he was given an escort. He was showed tender mercy. He was showed some attention and care. But the Bible says in verse 22, the latter part, the rich man, when he died, it just says he died and was buried. What a terrible testimony to leave behind. Verse 23 tells us the destinies of these two. Oh God, help us understand and believe this story right in front of our right in front of our minds in the Bible. The truth, the reality of heaven and hell. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, the rich man, being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of a finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in torment in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, Lazarus is comforted, and thou art tormented. We see here in the destinies of these two individuals, one goes to heaven and one goes to hell. That's the truth. Plain, simple, black, and white right off the page of scripture. Where are you going when you die? We're in the midst of a pandemic. The virus could take anybody out at any time. We could die from some other cause. Are you ready to meet your God? Life is short. It's but a vapor. Eternity is forever. Come to the goodness and grace of God through the shed blood of Jesus and be saved before it's everlasting too late. That's the message. The truth about heaven and hell, it's real. The destinies of the lost and the saved are clear off the pages of Scripture. Some will go to heaven. Some will go to hell. Those that go to heaven will trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Those who go to a devil's hell are full of pride and reject God and will not humble themselves and be saved. Two men, two lives, two deaths, two destinies. Turn in your Bible to John 3.16. Jesus told us very clear about these two destinies. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. There's destiny one. To perish is to go to a devil's hell for all eternity. But he that believeth but of a everlasting life. Everlasting life. That's heaven. Now stay in that same book, John 3, and go to the end of the chapter, the last verse. Verse 36. He that believeth on the Son have everlasting life. That's the truth. Notice the second part of that verse. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Right now, I'm standing in the presence of of either a lost person or a saved person. You're not in the middle. You're either going to a devil's hell or you're going to God to be with him in heaven for all eternity. Your choice. And that choice needs to be made before you die. These two men died. 
Their destinies were fixed. Notice in verse 26 in your Bible. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. Underline, circle, highlight the word fixed. L-I-X-E-D. It means a permanent situation. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. In other words, the location is fixed, it's final, you're not going to be traveling anywhere, you've got to stay right where you are. Forever, for all eternity. For those in heaven, that's a glorious thing. But for those that go to a devil's hell, that's a horrible thing. Now notice last of all in this text, two witnesses. The rich man had the two witnesses. He wanted more witness. He wanted someone to resurrect from the dead and witness to his friends. No. Jesus said they've had Moses and the prophets. There's not going to be any other sent to them. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers. He had five brothers that he wanted the gospel preached to. He wanted five, He wanted these five brothers to hear the good news about Jesus and Calvary and the cross that they may be saved. But they had a witness to them and they would be no more witness. Let me ask you, do you have five brothers? Do you have a mother? Do you have a dad? Do you have a sister? Do you have a brother? Do you have children? Do you have a grandchild? Do you have a neighbor? Do you have a co-worker? Do you have people that you need to be witnessing to? Do I have people in my circle of friendships and neighborhood that I need to be listening, uh, witnessing to? Yes, we do. And the gospel is true. This story is true. We need to be about the business of witnessing and sharing the gospel before it's everlasting too late, before one of your friends, one of your relatives end up in this situation that the rich man did. You can share the gospel in a pandemic. If you believe that, blow your horn. We need to be praying for the lost. We need to be calling them. We need to be witnessing to them. We need to be sharing Jesus as long as we have breath. Notice here, five brothers, that he may testify, verse 28, unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Every person's given a witness from God. God is just. And he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. No, they wouldn't. Verse 31, Jesus says, And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. I'm trying to persuade you today. While there's time, though one rose from the dead, God is so merciful. We see in Luke 16, 19 to 31, the truth about heaven and hell. I say to you with all my heart this morning, I'm 59 and I accepted Jesus when I was 19 and a half years old. In a Southern Baptist church in Clinton, Tennessee. And he is more real to me than life itself. He has forgiven my sins. He's come into my heart through the Holy Spirit. He is with me. And I give him honor and glory and praise. He's my happiness. He's my joy. 
He's my thrill. He's my satisfaction. He's my hope. He's my encouragement. He's my strength. He's my everything. And I praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to enjoy God. You need to enjoy Jesus. He's our greatest satisfaction. He's our thanksgiving. He's our praise. He's so glorious. The things of this world, the sex, the things, the merchandise, the money, the pleasures, the eating, the drinking, the drugs, all these things cannot be compared to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the everlasting Savior. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He's the resurrection and the life. He's the bread of life. He is our everything. David said it best in Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Woo! Give God glory. What a God we serve. If you don't know him, you need to be saved. I want to lead you in a sinner's prayer of repentance. Here's how you get saved. If you're lost and you want to be saved, say this prayer. You say, is it that simple, Brother Tom? It is because he's done all the work on an old rugged cross for you. And by simple faith in him, you can be saved. Pray with me. Father, I ask you today to forgive me of my sins, to come into my heart and save me and give me the life of Jesus. And I give you this old worn out, broken life. Father, I want to I follow you now. I want to enjoy your fellowship and rejoice in you and bring you glory all my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, my friend, that's not a magical prayer. If you sincerely prayed that prayer, the gospel is real. The gospel will save you. It's the power under God unto salvation. And I want to know about it. Text me, call me. And let's get to starting on this glorious relationship that you have with God through the blood of Jesus. He's giving you the Holy Spirit within. You have the Word of God. You've got everything you need for life and godliness but to, get to begin a glorious life in Jesus. Let's get on with it. Church, I love you. I praise God for you. And our best days are ahead of us. Our best days or right in front of us, we're faster, better, and greater than ever before. We're going to give God glory, and we're going to magnify His name like never before. God bless you. Have a good day.